All right, welcome back. In this video, I will just show you how to make your own power function in C++. You don't actually need to make your own power function um, because C++ has the pow function built into it. So what if we wanted to do something like this? C out pow, um, and let's have like uh, three squared. So we go 3.0, 3.0, and then end line. Uh, now, if you're watching this video about how to make your own functions, then I'm assuming you already know that how is a built-in function and how it works. These are passing the arguments. This is the base and this is the exponent. And if you want to use pow, you have to include um, the cmath header file. So cmath, just like that. Okay, so then when we go to build and run this program, we expect it to output simply just 27. All right, perfect. Uh, now all we want to do is we want to build our own version of the power function, of the power function, but we'll just make it our own. Uh, because right now it's operating as a black box like we don't know all we know is we're passing in these arguments and we get back the expected answer but the code for how it works is hidden somewhere in cmath but you know we're just learning how to make useful functions so we might as well try and mimic this one all right we're not going to need cmath anymore because we're building our own function and we'll just build we'll just write the code right here above our main function so we know that the pow function uh, was returning a double type and let's call it something, instead of calling it power, we're going to call it something really obvious, like my power function. There you go. And we're going to pass in the exact same argument. So first we'll pass in the base, then that's a double, we'll just call that double A, and then the exponent, double B. All right. We can add in our curly braces for the body of the function now. And if we want, we can even leave a note to someone saying, someone you know was to come to this and be like why what's this my power function thing we're saying this is just a home made version of pow all right so there we go so someone sees like oh okay yeah pow function all right we're just figuring out what the code would look like for pow the pow function so basically how the pow function works uh just by inspection is um to raise something to the exponent basically we want um we want to multiply a by itself b times and that's why this works because when we had pow we had three times three times three well we're just multiplying this argument here by itself this many times so knowing that uh, we know that this sounds a lot like we're going to be having to use some sort of loop um, so temporarily what we want to do is we're just going to store a the base in a, in something else just not called a we're just gonna so we'll define something here we'll have double uh, let's call it ands and for now, we're just going to store a in there because we know we're going to have to be multiplying a by itself many times. And also, let's say we could use a for loop or we could use a while loop. Um, let's just use a while loop. And if we're using a while loop, that means we have to um, define our incrementing integer outside of the loop. So we'd have int i. And let's just initialize that to 1. All right, so now, now inside of our loop, we'll have our while loop. Again, all we want to do is we want to multiply a by itself b times. So to do that, let's just set um, our condition will be i. Uh, we want to do this while i is less than b. And uh, that should be good. Be careful for your off by one errors here, but we'll double check that we know, you know, if maybe we're really going to start with like i is equal to zero and this is less than or equal to b or something like that. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. All right. And then in our statements here, this is where we're just going to multiply a by itself as many times as we need to. So we'll do that by saying ands is equal to ands times a. All right, and then I think that should probably be good. Oh yeah, we should probably increment. So we'll have i plus plus. And then lastly, what we want to do is once we once we break out of this, we do want to return the value so that we can like print it to the screen or something. So we'll just go return ands. All right. So let's go see. So when we go and build and run this now, when we compile it, it's going to highlight here as an error saying, okay, well now pow is not declared in our scope. That's because we got rid of the cmath header file. And that's good because we're not actually doing pow anymore. We want to use our own homemade power function that works exactly the same as pow. So we did call that in our main function when we want to call it, it's called my power function. So there you go, we type in my and it's already bringing it up. So it's asking us to pass in a double called a and a double called b. And because we know that this works exactly the same as the pow function, we know that this one would be the base. And so, uh, sure, let's do the same thing. So 
in actually no, let's do two plus and two just to get it something slightly different and then 3.0. So this is saying we basically want to cube two, right? Like two times two times two or two times itself three times. Exact same syntax as the pal function. All right, so if we compile that, here we go, it removes the error and we're gonna go run this and we expect two times two times two to be eight, right? So we run that, look at that, it prints an eight. So there you go, that's how to make your own power function. If you're curious about why it works or how it works, well, we can just talk about that real quick. Uh, when we're passing in, when in the main function, we're passing in these two arguments, right? So two and three, and we just know that two, that A is the base and B is the exponent. You know, we can even make a special comment just in case someone is a little unfamiliar. We'll say A is the base, B is the exponent. Okay, so there we go. Now there's like really no questioning about what's going on here. And then we have just storing ands, uh, we're storing a and ands, so we're, for now we're going to store that 2 in here. So ands is currently a 2, i is 1. And then here, so inside our loop, i is 1, b is 3. So we have uh, ands, which is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, and we increment i. Now i is, um, now i would be 2, and ands would be 4. So then we come back and do the loop again. So now we have i is 2, b is 3. So yeah, uh, we're going to do this one more time. And then ands was currently 4. 4 times a, which was 2, gives us an 8. So ands now is 8. And then we increment i, and i would be you know uh, 2 plus 1, so it's 3. And at that point, uh, it's going to check here again, but um, i is going to be equal to 3. So 3 is not less than 3, so it's going to kick us out of the loop. And the last thing that it saw ands was was as an eight, and then we're going to return that eight, and that's why this power, my power function, is returning the correct answer. If you find that confusing, same thing. It always helps just work it out on paper, and you'll be able to see exactly how this loop is working. But just you know, uh, as far as an instruction on how to make a useful function, you know, mimicking a, a familiar function that we've seen before, this is basically uh, could be the code that is hiding out in CMath. Who knows? Really, we don't ever see it. Um, but there you go. Now that's like a that's a really useful uh, function that you're able to build on your own now.